Sarah Badwi here from Horse Racing Nation. Pleased to be joined by Gina Bacola. For the first time, I think that I'm having you on any of the HRN feed, but you and I have chatted before. Uh, Gina, for the few people that don't know, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I, I owe you many because you've helped me you know, many times <laughs> on uh, my show, on live streams. And what's great is that since you asked me now, I won't feel bad about asking you in a couple of weeks to come on my show for Breeders' Cup and help me out with the race there too. So it worked out perfect. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I worked on TVG for about five years, years ago. I've been in a lot of different uh, roles in horse racing right now over the last couple of years. I've worked um, on my own podcast that I created and I work in partnership with a lot of different racetracks. Currently Santa Anita, I've worked with Louisiana Downs. I was on, on their broadcast, uh, Sam Houston over the last couple of years. Uh, I've done some stuff with some of the Northern California affairs and I work with a couple different websites where I get to promote uh, host and talk all about sports so everything going on in like football basketball baseball I get to cover uh, all that stuff which is a lot of fun in addition to horse racing and uh, on my shows every week I'll always talk about whatever the biggest races are wherever uh, those may be so if it's Keeneland or Belmont or Saratoga wherever they're running uh, we'll always have a focus on wherever the, the big stakes races are. So if you're a horse racing fan every week, some great background noise to throw on. And uh, and I'll always try to find some prices for you too. You're never going to hear like a chalky opinion for me. I can promise you that. That's definitely the truth. And that's part of why I wanted to have you on to talk about this Santa Anita Rainbow Six mandatory payout that is happening on Saturday, just recently announced as well. So um, a very tricky sequence to navigate. Yes. I don't really feel as though there's uh, a standout single or a nope. horse that you can really sink your teeth into that you can rely on. There's a lot of maiden claimers and um, some might look at this and be like, oh man, I don't really want to get into this. But you and I, I feel like are going to look at this sequence and be like, oh, this is exciting because we can find some prices. It's challenging. And for me, I've, uh, as someone who's worked and covered racing at all levels, thoroughbred, harness racing, quarter horse racing from like the big tracks to the small tracks, five to one is five to one for me. Like, I, I don't mind where you get it, in what way you get it. It's all the same. So, uh, as you said, these aren't going to be a bunch of stakes races all the way through, but they are challenging. Big fields, they made sure to put the hardest races in the pick six sequence. So, I mean, we kick off with some maiden claimers in the first couple races in huge fields and a lot of horses that you don't really feel like you can trust, but you can probably find some some fun prices along the way. So, it you got to put your handicapping cap on uh, for this sequence. It's tough. Absolutely. And, you know, you referenced a time where you and I chatted previously. I think it was the last time you and I talked was that Louisiana Downs mandatory yep. payout on closing day for the pick six. Uh, you had some success in that sequence. Yep. It was a great uh, time to be paying attention to what you had to say in there. So I'm hoping that we can have the same success going into this one. And we start off with a tough race for these two year olds. It's California breads or California sired maiden claimers. Um, we're starting in race number five, going six furlongs on the dirt for this pick six. And I want to let you start us off because uh, this is probably my least exciting opinion that I have. So I'm, I'm hoping that you have something different. Yeah, it's not a not a fun way to get things started with Calbred Maiden 50 claimers. And you have uh, I'm going to be down towards the inside, probably combinations of the, the one, two, three and four, uh, depending on, you know, how big your ticket is. Remember, it's a 20 cent base, so you can spread out a little bit and you can use a, a pretty good amount of horses and still have an affordable ticket. King Zog is the horse that most people will use and will start with. He's probably the horse to catch. Unfortunately, he he's kind of stopped in a couple of his last starts and now he has to go a little bit farther. Like I'm just not convinced that he really is a, a dead cinch right off the bat at a horse that you want to single in on. And you know, a horse who was right. It was in the same race with him. Menti Rosa showed a lot more improved speed and Menti Rosa was kind of right behind King Zog. He might be improving. I thought Menti Rosa was also worth including um, at Los Alamitos reign of speed had a brutally wide trip in his last start. And he's got a little bit more speed than he was able to show recently. That career debut, he flashed some speed there. Um, two, three, and four will take a lot of support from most. If I was going to get a little bit creative and throw another horse in, which uh, I, I probably will, it's, it's the one, start them up. The rail draw is a little bit concerning to me, but I, I really liked his last effort. He 
he was kind of on the outside. He was in post uh, post nine. He was uh, number 10 in that race. And he made a really good move down towards the inside. He was like in the two path. And I thought he ran really well down towards the inside. I think he can maybe take one more step forward. So I'm not convinced really at anyone in here. I'm going to lean towards the horses on the inside. I'll have combos of like one, two, three, and four with uh, probably the three Menti Rosa as the horse. If I had to pick one, I'm, I would lean towards the most with a little bit of upside. I hear you on nobody really being trustworthy in here, but I'm definitely with you on some of these inside horses. King Zog, you mentioned going out for the fourth time in his quest to break his maiden. He's disappointed as the favorite a couple of times. I feel like he had some legitimate excuses mm -hmm. to go back um, where he was uh, breaking from post five. He got bumped yep. around quite a bit. But put it, a line right through that race, right? That's one of those where you just put a line through and don't even pay attention. It really bothers me that the horse that took the worst of that, Shakun, was able to finish ahead of him. Mm -hmm. And then he hung in his last start. I mean, yeah. on, on September the 18th, he was close up. He was two off. He was your two to five favorite that day. And he, he loomed up with dead aim and he just okay. absolutely hung. Um, that's concerning. Now, do they just say, let's go to the front today and not even try to sit. And maybe he gets a different trip. I mean, maybe, I think that an aggressive ride from anybody could make a serious difference in here. Yeah. Um, I there's nobody that I'm looking at with extreme confidence. I guess I just want the horses that have had less chances to lose. So I like the one start them up as well. I like the improvement from the first start to the second start. Um, I, I feel like with King Zog, you're just looking at a horse that has surpassed that buyer part twice. But I mean, just the way that he's doing it is just not impressive. Yeah. But and now an extra half for a long, you know, to right. go. And when you look at the rest of this field, though, it's just like, who else? I would love to be interested in one of these first-time starters, but neither of them show much, and they don't rate very highly on our uh, Horse Racing Nation first-time or power. No pedigree team. or no real overwhelming yeah. barn statistics first time out. You mentioned Chacoon. Like, both Reef City and Chacoon, I mean, they wouldn't shock in this race at all. Like, they're not far behind. Mm -hmm. I, I don't but what we're talking about there's not like all that much speed so i don't know if the race is going to shape up that well for either one of them who haven't shown that much speed i wouldn't i wouldn't talk anyone off of using them and i think we're both just feeling like this is probably one of the more spread races in the sequence even right off the bat just because it's it's hard to be too excited about anyone in here so i hate just saying oh i don't like anyone i'm going to use the favorite i don't want to do that right like that's that's not a smart thing to do um so maybe start them up is the one that you and I both kind of think may be fun. And if people are looking for that sort of uh, middle price horse to use, maybe that's a nice one to throw in on your ticket and add if you weren't thinking about using start them up. Definitely agree. And I think that this could definitely be the kind of race where some people go all, uh, that's not really my strategy. Yeah. Um, so I would probably try to keep it to maybe two, three horses because I feel like a lot of people are going to spread significantly. Mm -hmm. because and I if everybody's, and your point, if everybody spreads and you spread and you catch an eight or 10 to one shot, well, sometimes they don't really play as well because a lot of people might have that eight or 10 to one shot. So if anyone out there likes a horse in this race right off the bat, this would be a fun race to maybe play one ticket if you're going to play multiple and like single a horse that you really liked or go short. And then you'll maybe you can really get some separation. Unfortunately, I don't have that opinion here. I, I wish I did. I wish there was one I liked a little bit more right off the bat. I couldn't agree more. I think multiple tickets might be the way to go in this mm -hmm. spot. However, there is a horse that I like a lot in the next race, which nice. is not at all um, easier whatsoever. We have made no. a play yet again, three-year-olds and out going six furlongs on the turf now. There's a horse in the number seven, Icy Flavor, who is getting yes. on the turf for the first time. And this one, I love the pedigree because this one's a half to not far now, who is one of my favorite New York turf horses, who is very fast early. And he's one of the few horses on the New York circuit that will actually go and set legitimate fractions when he's sprinting on the turf, unlike some of them. Um, he's had a lot of success lately this season. Um, he also has one eye, so I like that too. Um, but the sibling, two eyes, blinkers go on, first time on the turf. And I mean, 10 to one morning line, I don't know that we get that, but that would be really nice and that's definitely my top pick in here yeah the uh, the blinks come on and the dam was also a four-time winner on the turf with stakes placed and you mentioned the one sibling uh on the turf too so there's a lot of grass there 
Um, you have Maldonado jumping aboard, who he's been like riding very kind of under the radar really well too. And you sort of typecast him as a speed guy, but he's actually d- shown over the last couple of years that he can win in, in, in multiple ways. And I think Icy Flavor is an absolute must use in this race in the pick six. I had Icy P- uh, Flavor, I think, pick second in here um, and a really fun price to include. Um, the horse that I, I thought was uh, one that I'm definitely going to be using is Facetious. Um, the five so this horse is actually a double digit price on the morning line also the blinkers will come off if you look at his first couple of races their turf sprints they're actually pretty solid and he had legitimate trouble in both of those starts his debut he was fourth he was only beaten a couple lengths and in his third start they stretched him out and he showed a little bit more speed. Again, he did not run all that poorly behind Handy Dandy, who's the horse that we've seen in up against Stakes Company. And that was back in November of 2021. So he he was off for a long time, really long layoff. He shows back up in July. He shows up on the dirt at Low Sal, flashes a little bit of speed, but just runs like a horse who needs the race. Then they stretch him out and they put the blinkers on and they just try to send him, but you know, he's a runoff. He doesn't like the distance. I know you have to be a little forgiving when you go through his races, but I think you can very easily be forgiving about the last couple. And if he goes back to some of those efforts sprinting on the turf, remember those were against better maidens. Those were against maiden special weights. Now he's in against maiden claimers. We have to do a little archeology span with him, you know, a little digging with facetious, but that's where you find the prices when you're able to kind of cross races out, eliminate races, He's going to be making his third start off the bench. They said, nah, blinkers didn't work. Let's take them back off. I think it's a decent spot for him to run a really big race. So facetious will be a price horse that I'm definitely throwing in in the pick six in here. You make a really strong case for him. And I mean, Handy Dandy is a name that I recognize right off the bat as being one of those better turf horses that um, is more recognizable in California. You know, that that's much better company than what yep. he's going to be facing in here. And believe me, I am the type to make excuses for horses mm-hmm. when we can and keep yep. them in my back pocket when they're at a price to play them next time. Um, was there anyone else that you had a strong interest in, in this spot? The, you, you mentioned the uh, icy flavor. I thought you are pressed was a bit intriguing too. This is a horse who ran well at golden gate on the synthetic in the debut, um, three siblings to race two tried the turf and both were multiple winners on it. So that's a positive for this horse trying the grass. Um, you know, folks who wanted to go a little bit deeper, I wouldn't have much of a problem if this was your spread race with a horse like conch daddy, who, you know, is a little bit intriguing. Um, I actually watched the Our Shining Light race uh, in Dundalk. He completely missed a break. He was two from the back in a field of 14, and he angled out to the middle. He had a huge gallop out. He was only beaten about a length and three quarters. And what's interesting with him, they, uh, our friend uh, Barry Spears, the sniper, he calls it the makeover package where this horse comes in, they get the blinkers on, first time Lasix, you kind of trying the turf, a lot of things like kind of sp- uh, spiffy in this one up the damn one on the turf and has produced two winning turf siblings. I would not be shocked to see a good performance from our shining light. If that's one uh, that you want to spread, but again, to show you how challenging this race is, there are two very live Peter Miller horses to the outside that are going to take a lot of money. Really, really difficult fifth and sixth race the first two legs of the sequence but i like the horses that you and i mentioned at five and seven i think those are great horses for people to throw in that may not have been thinking of them right off the bat i agree this seems like the kind of race to catch your price especially if you like some of those shorter prices earlier uh, moving on to the next race that we're going to talk about we have yet again another maiden claiming field this mm-hmm. time for the phillies and mares we are going a mile on the dirt This one I felt like could possibly be a little more formful. I do like the number four Trojan way a little bit. That's my single. That's my stand. This is where I I felt like this is the take a stand race, you know, because maybe there are three horses or three that you can look at that might be close to the same price. And and when that's the case, I don't necessarily want to use all of them if they're short prices, because it really hurts your ticket structure when you build a ticket that way. I think if you can find one that you can lean towards a little bit more, um, and, and for me, it was the horse that you mentioned Trojan way, but talk to us a little bit about, and then I'll, uh, I'll piggyback your point. All right. Well, perfect. I'm glad we're on the same page. Um, the logicals just seem logical in here. This one has only raced a couple of times, has some early speed, has experience going this mile distance while others do not. She was third at this level last time at nine to one. That was her dirt debut. All the siblings are winners. And I think that 
just a horse to the outside kitten calls. This one has had a lot of chances. I understand why some might gravitate towards this horse as this is the lowest level that she is going to be facing in terms of claiming tag, but I just didn't see a lot to love at a similar price. Just kind of the point that you brought up of if you like both of them, just pick one. Yeah, she was favored last time out when she dropped from maiden specials into maiden claimers. I mean, I didn't see anything of like a legitimate excuse. She was like a little bit wide, but she just did not fire that day. And now they drop again. Um, I was just more, much more encouraged with Trojan Way's effort. If, and, you know, you, did, you look at this filly, she has two races. Her debut was against Better on the Turf. That race produced four next out winners. And in that race, she just completely missed the break and she never got in it. In her second start, she was bumped a bit at the start, a little bit of crowding down on the inside, but she pushed her way up nicely into third and she wanted to go even more. There was a little opening. She kind of moved to the lead, but she got shut off. She backed up and she was kind of waiting and the leaders opened up that day and the race is a little bit better than it might look on paper. She had some legitimate kind of traffic issues. The runner up that day named Squillions came back and actually went over to Remington Park, uh, beat maiden special weights there and then beat winners. Uh, so has won two races in a row over at Remington. I like Trojan way because you mentioned kitten calls. Maybe Charlotte Harbor is another one. Second time Sarin that some people may look at, but all three of them are going to be shortish prices. I think Paul Aguirre is one of those barns that he doesn't have a whole lot of horses. He's not really a household name. He's a very, very solid conditioner. Um, when he gets horses that are the right stock, or if he dives in and, and claims a horse that he likes, those horses usually run really, really well. Like, And they're usually at lower levels, and he just knows where to spot horses. He's very logical with where he places them. I always like uh, an Aguirre horse um, in the right spot. So I think this is a good spot for Trojan Way. And there's... There's not that much speed in here either. I mean, he could be just sitting second if Kitten Calls goes. With Maldonado aboard, maybe he goes. This is going to be my single in the pick six. A bold stand, and I approve. <laughs> we'll move on to race number eight. Now, we don't have maidens, finally. We have yep. regular claimers, $25,000 types, Phillies, Mayor, three-year-olds, and up. I'm going a mile on the turf, and this is the biggest price that I like within the sequence, and it's going to be the number seven draw me because there's a lot of ways you could go in this race. There's a lot of horses that I feel like we've seen a lot of. There's a lot of horses at shorter prices that I feel are kind of tailing off form or not quite the horses that they used to be, some of those being those older six year old mares that maybe we've already seen the best of what their career is going to be. This one at 30 to one on the morning line, dropping in for the tag. But if we go back to her last turf race, she was third at 48 to one. And that was with a 75 buyer. And that figure really makes her a contender with a field like this. 36 career starts, first time routing on the grass, although she has gone the distance on the synthetic before. I mean, maybe I just want to look for a horse that it has an upset threat where they're trying something new for the first time and they have a figure that fits with a group like this. I just feel as though this one could certainly be live at a price, but I think that the number eight novella is obviously the horse to beat. that one being seven to two on the morning line. Novella should get a great trip. The horse you were mentioning, draw me her last turf race was a very productive race. Also that had a couple next out winners in there. And those those starter allowance races at the level come up very, very tough with horses that are in great form and have like one claiming race for 25 somewhere on their page in the last year or year and a half. And they can qualify for those races. They're, they're tough. Sometimes I, I would not talk you off using draw me throwing draw me in at a massive price of 30 to one novella, very logical should be on the tickets feathers. You know, she comes from behind. Um, and, and so sometimes like it, it'll, you'll, she'll be up against it but she has faced a lot better throughout most of her career. And she seemed to have found the, the wake up level last time out when she was able to get the better of that group. She, I mean, if you watch the race, I have no idea at the top of the lane, how she wins. It was an incredible ride by Juan Hernandez. He found his way through like the most tightest little spaces in and out and in and out and just got up, beat a horse who came back to win their next start. The one who's a, a little intriguing to me that, maybe kind of forgotten about Kitty Hawk Lass, uh, the one, this is the uh, six-year-old. Now she has been off for a while. I'm thinking she may be able to get back to a decent effort. Third start back off the long layoff. She had legitimately no chance last time out. She wanted to go and she was at the back of the pack and she was completely blocked. And those are the races where it's kind of deceiving because you're just sort of stuck 
for a while before you you can even launch your rally. So we don't really know how much closer horses like that can get when they're at the back, just kind of waiting, 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 and then they can finally go. Um, I'll, since I'm singling in the race before, now it'll give me a little bit more coverage along the way. So I think I may throw in your uh, 30 to one shot here. If I'm looking for a price, absolutely. Why not? And uh, I'll throw in feathers. I'll throw in Kitty Hawk Lass and Novella. Those will be, you know, horses who I build the ticket around. D- what do we do with the speed horse like Galavi, who was like a runoff last time? I I think there might be a decent amount of speed in here, though, with a couple others. Um, so I and in a big field, um, like with Miss Hard Knocks, probably flashing some speed. Do you have any interest in Galavi? So her and Feathers were the two that I looked at where I was like, I know these horses, They're, they've they been so consistent and reliable in the past. And, and now I see the kind of tailing off as far as figures. Feathers with the win last time, not at all as much as Gallaby. I get that maybe there's an excuse last time, but I mean, with so much race experience, you really want a horse that's running off at age six. I mean, at five to one, I don't think that I do when I like more interesting prices in here. I mean, every chance to rebound from that effort and, and, and do better in this spot. But I think I was, I was, this was one of the last ones that I kind of crossed off, like, oh, maybe not. Yeah, it's, it's a really challenging sequence. I think there were the, maybe two, the seventh race and maybe getting into the ninth where you feel like you can be a little more formful, but the other races, I mean, they are so, so wide open. And uh, I know you missed them because we were away for them for a little bit, but we've got some maidens coming back in the ninth. Here we go again. And (laughs) in the horse racing nation, first time or power ratings, I trust because I don't know about some of these horses that have experience and all the first time starters are either fours or fives on our report. Those horses are the ones that are winning at a higher percentage, five being the best rating that you can be. The five in here is the number five short journey. Six to one morning line. Is that one you like as well? Yeah. Awesome. We're in, uh, I like it. We're together on this one. Um, Palma has always been just a really sneaky, good first time starter trainer and a good with young horses. So this barn is 10 for their last 77. When you break it over the last five years, um, that, and they've, that's a 13% clip and a $2 and 98 cent ROI blindly. So if you just blindly bet on every one of Hector Palma's first time starters over the last five years, your $2 would get you back $2 and 98 cents there. And they're always prices. That's why they're fun to throw in on pick fours, pick fives and sixes like this. You're never going to see a Hector Palmer first time starter. That's six to five, or that's getting a ton of action. The dam of this one was a three time winner. It, you know, going through the work tab, it looks like there may have just been one work that was like the, t- the maybe off or the timing off. But then since then we've had four works and the, the tab has been pretty steady. I think if you're, for like the first time starters, I'm, I'm kind of doing my little mental checklist normally, right? Like I'm looking at, are they good? Like, how's the pedigree? How's the barn? Is the work tab steady? And then, you know, I'll look over at HR nation and see how they, you know, how you guys will project them. Some of the times, like you mentioned, do a fantastic job with the first time starter stuff over there. And if, if horses sort of fit all of those criteria, then you say, okay, sure. Uh, might, might as well throw them in. I think this Philly does that. I, uh, I'm glad that you see this the same way. It makes me more excited about using this horse as one that I rely on. And that's kind of my strategy in here is only use the first time starters because I mean, with the horses with experience, you have the two who's going turf to dirt for a kitten's joy, which I don't really love in general. You have the three who was third on debut, but I don't love that she was really never a threat to win that race whatsoever. I guess the case could be made for number seven, who's dropping in class, does have a trainer change. I mean, that's I agree, kind of- right? Of the ones that have run, you yeah. can at least like, give her an excuse and she comes over from Gulfstream. She faced better. And now she's in the O'Neill barn. She, you just sort of treat her like a wild card. Yes. Yep. Um, and I guess that's the one with experience that you would want to use because the inside three, uh, I mean, the one's not a short price, but the other two, the two and the three, I just don't know about those two. No. And I think I like shorter prices in some of the other races better. Now I'm a USC Trojan fan. So it pains me. I, I wouldn't have a problem throwing Bruins mastery in, like you mentioned with some of the first time starters, there's a few works that seem like they're missing here, but this barn is actually sneaky. They've won with six first time starters and just a limited sample size over their last 35. And the dam won her first two starts, the dam Candrea, and then she was grade one placed. She was in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Philly. She was like nine to one in that race. Um, you know, she was a player when she was in there. So she was precocious and pretty good. This Philly probably has some issues because. She, you know, if you look at her tab and she shows up here for maiden 40, but 
she may be good enough still to beat a group like this that's not that strong, even if she has some issues, and she might be a price. I'm much more intrigued by the lightly raced or the first time starters. And I sort of treat the O'Neill horse as kind of one too. All right. Well, I'm glad that we have some agreement in what could be a tricky race, even though it's a shorter field. And then we get to the final leg and congratulations if you're alive here and you've made it because you're probably alive to some pretty good payouts. And that is race 10, the starter optional claiming Phillies and Mares three-year-olds and up. We're going a mile back to the turf course. I like the two a little bit, Ropers and Wranglers. This one was second last time out off a layoff and was running on dirt at Emerald Downs before that, which was kind of random, but obviously prefers the grass, better figures on the turf, has hit the board in every single turf race so far to date. I just really like and respect the consistency, especially for a group that sometimes maybe you don't really totally trust them. The number six horse, Witch Moon, is one that just kind of always comes running late, but I feel like a lot of the time it's a little bit too late. This is one of those deeper closers that I don't feel like they've really timed correctly. I know that she had some traffic trouble last time versus Ropers and Wranglers, but I mean, when you see more shows than seconds or first, yeah. I feel like it kind of becomes a concern after a certain amount of time. And then the other two horses that I kind of looked at and considered were the one in your face and the three Lizzie D. Do you have any super strong opinion to close us out? This is such a fun race to close out. Like this is such a fun pick four, pick five, pick six race because you, I mean, in like we play stable duel, it's a great race because you can make a case for so many six, eight, 10 to one shots. You mentioned two horses that I'm absolutely going to be using in the pick sixes, uh, Lizzie D for sure in your face, for sure on the ticket ropers and Wrangler. It would be hard for me to be in this race and closing and not have that horse on my ticket with the possibility that they may be able to just run this field off their, uh, off their feet. The horse that I um I, I played the only time she won, and that's probably why I noticed her here. And and I may not have noticed her if it wasn't for that. It's Beachgrass. Now we may have to do a little archaeology again with her, but if you notice with Beachgrass, she broke her maiden back in March at this level against winners. So she beat winners to break her maiden, and following that, so she was eighteen to one when she won that day. She came back in her next start at the very same level. She was only four to one. She had legitimate trouble on April the 3rd. She comes back again at the very same level. She's nine to one, but she again has a brutal trip, a lot of trouble. So they give her some time off. She's off from May to September. She shows back up in September in a 50 starter allowance at Del Mar. And it was actually a pretty good effort. She stumbled badly at the start she was back to about ninth in that field of 11 about eight lengths off she was behind horses she kind of ran up onto the heels of arrival and she was you know a little bit in some traffic sneaky behind she showed a lot of good late energy she was fit that day but when you sort of dive into the race the winner won by four lengths she was right next to third i mean she was right there with a lot of the other group it's a little bit better than it looks on paper And now she's going to go second start off the bench. She's kind of sneaky in here. So I'm definitely going to throw in beach grass along with some of the others that you mentioned. Liz D had that really good race at Kentucky. That was kind of sneaky in your face, had a powerful performance and ropers and wranglers. They'll definitely be on my tickets there. But I mean, we're not even talking about school dance and Dolly May who both are very live. That's, this is a really well built sequence because you know, we've laughed a little bit about some of the maiden races and stuff, but as you pointed out, right when we started talking, there is not any horse that everyone's going to say, oh, yeah, that's my single and just move on. Nobody's going to be able to really turn this into like a universal pick five. It will be very tough to map out a ticket. Absolutely. And I think this is really a true like, horse player sequence. Like this is the kind of one that like, people that really actually gamble on a regular basis get really excited about and sink yep. their teeth into because this is the ones, these are the ones that have that life-changing money possibility. And as someone who was uh, just five of six short on a pick six at Belmont, I am hungry for a pick six score because that was rough. Let me tell you. And what's great is it's going to be most of our days once or twice, like we're all going to have one of those days. And these are those type of days with a 20 cent base wager with uh, what we're projecting to be around $2 million in the, the pick six pool and how challenging it looks. You stack up a couple five or six to one shots there. You will put yourself in line for a very, very big score. It really does look like it's that type of a 
sequence on paper. And I was excited when you asked to talk about it. Uh, anytime you need any help, you can, uh, you can call me and I'd love to chat races with you. All right. Well, that's good to know. And believe me, even if I did not call on you, you still would not owe me anything. I'm always happy to be <laughs> of service when you need somebody to chat about racing. And uh, I'm sure that we will be doing that very shortly once again in the future, whether it's for you or it's for me or either way, no matter what, uh, getting together to talk about some of these great races that we have coming up, especially with all the Breeders' Cup races. And while I have you, I would be remiss if I did not ask, what do you think about the Breeders' Cup Classic? Yeah, I think we're going to see flight line. Is it tomorrow morning? Uh, you and I are recording on Thursday. I think it's Friday or Saturday morning. Uh, he's going to be working out again. And yeah, we'll see if he scares some off. And I'm I'm very curious that if life is good, can put the pressure on him to make it just look like a different race than we've seen. He's never been in a race flight line. Like he's never even been in a race. Can Can some of these really fast horses, a horse like life is good, make it difficult for him and keep the other horses in the race uh, because there might be some other really good horses like, you know, epicenters and some of these three-year-olds who are good that if they're looking at his behind flight line and they're five or six lengths back, they may have no shot. It may be up to a horse like life is good. Can he be the horse to put the pressure on and maybe open this race up? Um, it, I will be, say, as we've talked, I'm always looking for prices, but uh, with flight line, it's one of those moments when you really feel like a horse racing fan, when you get to see brilliance and, uh, I still will probably be lining up to use a horse or two along with him, uh, you know, in, in any breeders cup classic exotics, but I I'd love to see top of the lane, kind of those two battling it out. And we'll see if he has anything left in the tank. I couldn't agree more. I'm a big flight line fan as many are, of course. And I feel like we're looking at really a horse of our lifetimes. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that the classic is going to be his time to really stamp himself as that and prove that to all of us, especially facing a very quality field of good horses, older and three-year-olds that we have this year. And I feel like we've been treated to a lot of star power so far this year. Yeah. And also, thanks for the text. We were matching today too. So, you I know, know we, 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 I, it worked out great. <laughs> I know, I was going to say. So, it worked out really well. It was like we were color coded and everything. Yep. So, we were, we were like working as a broadcast team together. And uh, <laughs> I look forward to the next few weeks. The, these are in sports. If you're a sports fan and you're watching like football and college football, basketball is just starting up right now, the baseball world series, college basketball is starting, hockey's just starting. But in horse racing now, these next couple of weeks are so much fun as. The final preps are basically all run now. Like yeah. we sort of know, like, you know, everyone who's probably going to be headed to their certain races. Now it's just going to be fields taking shape and all that prep over the next few weeks. Right. The time has come for uh, us to really see what's going on in these fields and start finalizing all of our opinions and the handicapping for all these Breeders' Cup races is going to be um, a lot of homework, but a lot of exciting homework. And I'm looking forward to it, as I'm sure you are as well. So good luck to everybody on this pick six sequence on Saturday at Santa Anita. And uh, thanks for tuning in.